Hey, here I am in the real classroom. All right, well, we are going to work on polynomial functions, and uh, I guess I'll save this some time, and I'll just get this to appear right here. So, okay, there it is. Uh, direct variation functions are the type where f of x is kx to the n. k is our constant of variation. That can be any number from very small to very large. It could be pi. It could be a whole number. X is our variable, and n is an integer, 2, 3, 7, 100, but not negative, all right? So, and not a fraction. So that's an integer exponent. So that's a direct variation function. Well, a polynomial, polynomial function is just one in which we've got a series of these direct variation functions added up. So it might be f of x equals uh, 3x to the fifth minus 2x to the second minus x plus 11 or something like that. That would be an example of a polynomial function. Here, n is 5. Here, the exponent is 2. Here, it's an invisible 1. And here, the exponent is 0. That's a constant function. And that's still part of a direct variation function. So that's OK. So these are four individual terms. Each term is called a monomial. Uh, if I sum them up, that gives me my polynomial. So we sometimes will call them binomials when they have two things, trinomials when they have three, but after that we just call them polynomials. All right, so I'm going to give you uh, a list of five, and we're going to decide which ones are and which ones aren't polynomials based on the idea that it has to be a sum of direct variation functions in which k can be any number, but x has to be raised to an integer value for n. Okay, we're back with our list of five possible polynomials. So we just want you to give these the thumbs up or not. All right, so A reads f of x is 2x to the third minus 24x squared plus 22x. What do you think, thumbs up or not? Okay, turns out that these are all okay. They're all direct variation functions with integer exponents. That, of course, is an invisible one, but we don't write it, so that's okay. The next one, g of x. What do you think? You can pause it if you want, look at it. The pi here is an irrational number, but it's okay because it's just being multiplied by x, so that's all right. The radical 2 here is also an irrational number, but it's also just being multiplied. And this is a small number, and then being subtracted by a larger number, we would actually put this in standard form by doing the subtraction, um, but it's still a polynomial because it can be written in polynomial form. h of x, reading through this, this is okay, but this is our first real problem. So this one is uh, no can do. It's not a polynomial because this is the same as saying 1 over 2x, all right? This one now, r of x is equal to 11 plus 2 over x plus 1. Again, we can't have division because this is really a negative exponent here, and um, that will give us, um, it's not really in the form of a direct variation function. So this term is the one that's bogus. This last one here, 3x to the 11 minus 4x to the 7 plus 8x minus the square root of 100. Well, that's just 10, so there's no problem there. We might need to clean this up as we need to clean this one up and put it in a standard form, but it still can be written as a polynomial. All right? So if we then go back to our original one, this is the type of thing you might have as a, home, have as a homework problem. They might ask you to do a couple of things. They might say, find f of negative 2, for instance, okay? Well, we just take that negative 2 and we plug it in there. Negative 2 to the third power is negative 8, times 2 is negative 16. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 24 is negative 96. And then a negative 2 times 22 would be minus 44. So we could just do the math, and we're going to get negative 60 if we combine these two, and negative 96 is going to give us negative 156, okay? So that's 
f of negative 2. Okay? If we did f of 0, this is quite easy because all of those terms will drop out and we get 0. But suppose you want to find f of x that equals 0. All right? That often throws students off the first time they see it. But think about what this is asking. It's saying we need to find an x value that when we substitute it in gives us 0. Okay? Well, we just found one. This one right here, when I plug in 0, 0 works so that everything drops out and I get 0. But when I have a third degree exponent, that's a little hint that we have potentially two more zeros to find. Okay, so in your book, in the homework, it'll say find the zeros of a function like that. Well, it's not really that hard, especially if you know your factoring skills, because what we try to do is break this down into its factored constituents. All right, so we ask, can we take out a, a number from each of these? And we can take out a 2. Can we take out an x from each of these? And yes, we can take out 1. After that, they're all gone. So I take out a 2x, and what's left behind is x squared minus 12x, and then plus 11. And then I keep asking, can I factor that? And I can keep the 2x there, but I can also factor this. This becomes x there and x there, and I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to make a positive 11, but add up to make a negative 12. You can again pause this if you want and try it on your own, but you'll see it's negative 11 times a negative 1. That rainbow check gives me negative 11 and a negative 1 make negative 12, and negative times negative gives me positive. So I want these, when they multiply, to give me 0. Well, that's going to happen when x is 0. We already know that. This will happen to be 0 when x is a positive 11. And here, this will be 0 when it's a positive 1. So my solutions, then, are 0, 11, and 1. Okay? So that's the solution set for the zeros for that polynomial.